Hi, Zeus here. In today's video, I'm going to talk about the very intense combat going on in highly developed six engine bases in season 17. I'm going to show you my level 22 boss battle and some of the battles leading up to that and some of the battles in the higher levels of level 22 after that that I did. I'm going to show you our the tech tree that we're using, the combat meta, and the different strategies and a whole variety of different bases that I, I'm going to show you how to beat successfully. Anyway, it's a long video, but I hope you stick with us to the end because there's a lot to learn and a lot to talk about. So this was the five engine base that I was using and it was a very successful base because it was an anti-rocket chopper base and you could not use an all heavy chopper rush to beat it. But it's now time to do the transition to six engines and we've got the keys to open it up as well as the shock mine after the sixth engine. And that's really critical because you have to have the shock mines open to prevent the seekers from wrecking your base. So we're going to go ahead and open up the six engine and max out the, the shock mines and rebuild our base. Many hours later. So after some more combat, we now have the keys to open up the building damage node and max that out and that's pretty important to doing well with six engines so we've got a three times win streak going and let's uh, go back into combat and see if we can make our way to level 22 so this base here is not well designed because it, it's going to help you go across the entire base without having to do any flaring. And flaring is one of the things that, if done right, can be highly successful at the right moment in time. And if not done right, can absolutely destroy your attack and guarantee you a loss. So bases that require flaring to be successful are a lot harder to successfully take out. So I'm gonna land two heavy choppas on the left and two heavy choppas on the right. And then on a delayed basis, because I don't want my bombardiers to be taken out by the mortars, which are very dangerous on the landing strip, and that's why they're all there. Uh, we're going to land our bombardiers. Now there's a amplified rocket launcher there just outside the Sky shield, one of the two sky shields there. We're going to take that out with the uh, barrage. And you see our, our troops are just naturally drifting in there, half split to go to the left, half split to go to the right of the ones that land on the left. The ones that land on the right are just absorbing all of the defenses there. And once they're done with that engine on the, on the right at the bottom, they're going to all just drift up beautifully to attack across the entire length of his remaining defensive weapons. And when you're dealing with bombardiers, this is really an important point. You don't want them attacking uh, defenses sequentially one after the other. You want them spread across each bombardier attacking a different defensive weapon, and that's how you're going to get the quickest time and the most efficient attack. Now we're going to use some some bombs here to take out this um, machine gun on the far left, just to try to speed up the the process of taking down the base. And and again, you know when you're when you're finishing off a base like this, it's important to figure out you know, where your bombardiers are going to be slowest in taking down the base so that they attack across the range of the base. So you see that that engine on the far left you know, is one of the last to go down and that's why I sped up by taking down that one machine gun. 
Both sky shields are down. We throw down some extra critters to speed up the process, and then the last engine goes down. So a minute 46, pretty good time against Cameron. Let's see how Cameron's doing. Oh, we won. So he's already got a minute 32, and he's just attacking our second last engine. And uh, he beautifully uh, sticks a flare underneath the sky shield to, to bypass the sky shield and the boom cannon. So nice job on that one, Cameron. But it's uh, overall too slow an attack. He doesn't have enough bombardiers actually ooh, look at that he actually flared all of his troops to the far corner by accident with his flare so maybe not such a great flare but anyway minute and two seconds and uh, it's a win for us so with that win we picked up 14 stars and now we've got a four times win streak and we've risen on the u.s leaderboard up to number 160. So we blew our win streak and lost a couple of times in a row, but uh, let's get back into battle. So this is a, uh, a base that's got all four rocket launchers and a doom cannon amplified next to the engine that's in the middle bottom there. And it's interesting, he's got nothing on the back left, which is a, a bit of a mistake, to be honest, uh, in the base design. So anyway, we're going we're gonna to attack this one with three rocket choppers and supporting bombardiers on the left, and one rocket chopper and bombardier boat landing craft on the right. And... The idea here is we're going to chew through the defenses on the left quicker and draw the fire of all of those rocket launchers while the one group of heavy choppa and three bombardiers knock out two of the engines on the right side. And so far, it's going extremely well. And what's, what's going to happen as we chew through that, that group of amplified defenses is about the same time we finish that, the, the second engine on the right is going to go down. And then all the troops are going to drift in an even line across towards the next line of defenses. And then we just have to go around the corner to that sky shield to fi finish the base. So you'll see here in a second what's going to happen. So everything's going to drift up there very nicely. And, uh, and now we're attacking across the full range of that back row. So it's going to go down pretty fast. And, and now we're already on to the last group of, of weapons in the, in the back underneath the sky shield. Tried to, tried to pick the, uh, the engine there, but it's, it's well placed. The sky shield's well placed, so I threw down some critters instead. This is close. I, I don't know if we're going to win. Minute 51, minute 50, he's down to one engine. We have one engine. Throw all our artillery at it. Minute 47. Snids. All right, it was much slower time. Minute 15. He's only got two bombardiers left. He's going to lose another one. And the last one on my rocket launcher. Uh, I'm not sure he's going to complete this base. He's, he's got a uh, machine gun and a boom cannon there to deal with. We'll see. Yeah, his heavies are going down. His heavies are going down one by one. I don't think he's going to complete this. So that's a win.
All right, let's go back into battle. Hmm. So this is a well-designed base, except I'd say that uh, just under where the red six in question marks are, there's nothing there, and that's actually a bit of a problem for how the base is designed, and that's going to make it easier for us to beat this base. Again, we're going to throw down three boats of heavies and three boats of bombardiers on the left, and one heavy chopper and one landing craft of bombardiers on the right. And the same sort of thing is going to happen, although it's going to be even faster for us to address the amplified weapons in the back row. And you'll, you'll see how this, this goes. And again, by putting the, um, the three on the left, we're going to chew through all those defenses on the left, on the bottom, about the, uh, about the same time as we finish chewing through the defenses on the right there. And our, our bombardiers are spreading out nicely across the bottom there to take out the rest of the defenses. And we haven't really even had to worry too much about the rocket launcher there next to that engine. So the last two defenses outside of the amplified weapons go down and now our troops close in. Now we're going to use our gunboat energy to thin out the defenses there to speed up the process of helping our bombardiers clear the base. So 2 minutes 22 seconds and and we're already down to the last few defensive weapons and we've got a beautiful row of bombardiers stretching across the entire length of of the base. Threw down a shock there because you never know the the, uh, the boom cannon might have turned and picked off one of my bombardiers. And now we're down to the last engine. And I'm trying to trying to pick the the engine so I don't have to chew through this guy's shield but wasn't working, so. And throw down a barrage and it's done. A minute 42. Not a great time, but let's see how MJ's doing. Minute 45, now he's he's lost. He's still got, got a ways to go. So he's got a nice line of bombardiers, but he's got fewer. He did not get all of his bombardiers to the to the end stage of the game. And that's really critical to get a good time. And uh, now he's lost that last uh, heavy, so he's gonna actually lose a few bombardiers to the, the boom cannon before it goes down. So he's got about, only we got about six bombardiers, including two that were respawned off of Dr. Kavan's second win. So a minute, so it's a victory for us. Super. Many hours later. So we've won a few more times and we've risen up now to just under level 22 and number 150 on the US leaderboard. And if we can win this battle, this is our uh, level 22 boss battle then and we'll achieve level 22 and get to open the level 22 chest. So, this base is more evenly distributed with most of the defensive weapons in the lower half of, of the warship deck. And there's just that little group of, of weapons defending the one engine tucked in the top corner there underneath the sky shield. So we're gonna we're gonna land the the heavy choppers and the bombardiers in an equal way, and then the danger of this uh, attacking this kind of a base is that 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 rocket launcher that's amplified there that we just barred out would snipe your bombardiers once the heavy choppers drift up 
towards the upper right hand engine there and so we can't we can't let it survive I mean, it's, it's just it's got to go so um, so we use some of our gunboat energy to take that down the other the other rocket launcher is not so problematic although that um, amplified shock launcher if it had gotten two shots on our bombardiers could have taken it taken them out so we've thrown down a couple of shocks now in a row to suppress it because it's it's pretty dangerous if not suppressed and that that last rocket launcher is just targeting a heavy chopper so it's, it's no big deal so everything's cleared out on the lower half of the base and now we're just down to that group of defensive weapons there protecting the last engine in the sky shield. So, almost done here. Sky shield goes down, we'll throw our last bomb and it's a minute 46. India Singh RV. It's pretty close, minute 50. Oh, looks like we got it. He just doesn't have enough. Um, three, six, ten. So he lost two bombardiers along the way, and that's really going to be the difference. So a minute 35. So that's another win. And uh, we are now level 22. We won our boss battle. First try. Awesome. So we're going to uh, open up this chest and then take another look at the, the tech tree and where we're at at this point. So at this point, we've pretty much maxed out everything on the tech tree except for riflemen, medics, flare, and two gunboat energy nodes. And we've been collecting the unlock tokens, uh, bullet uh, also, and um, uh, rocket chopper and smoke. And we've been collecting the tokens uh, to max out the artillery or bomb and... Uh, also to open up the seeker node and then the special defensive weapon node beyond the seeker node. And um, we're getting pretty close on, on our goal there. Now, after uh, six engines, there's only a, a handful of nodes in seven engines. You've got some special defensive weapons, troop attack, and building health, and then some mines, as well as a gunboat energy node. All right, um, let's take a look at some of the battles that we did just leading up to the boss battle. Here's, here's a base that um, a lot of people have adopted. It has kind of a a string of defensive weapons across the middle of the base with a little bit of an arc at the end. And what that's going to do is pull your troops up and around and expose them to the amplified rocket launchers there. And the idea is that the amplified rocket launchers pick off your bombardiers, except that, you know, with max level barrage, I can take and that and uh, level four bomb, I can take out with my gunboat energy the uh, rocket launchers so that they don't do that to me. And meanwhile, my my bombardiers are spread out and are wreaking havoc on this base. We threw down some critters to take out that last uh, rocket launcher, and the base goes down. And here's, um, here's another one, a little bit similar, but this time I decided to go 
with the uh, two on the right, two on the left strategy, embark down the amplified rocket launchers in the, the middle bottom right there. So far, the Amplify rocket launcher is going after the um, the heavy choppers there on the right. Now, I, I sent in Kavan on a very delayed basis, spawned a whole bunch of heavies with the idea that that would provide a uh, distraction to that, that rocket launcher so to not go after our bombardiers. And we lost a few bombardiers along the way. He had well-designed uh, mine arrangement, but uh, still uh, good enough to get us the win. Now, I'm showing you we are soldiers attack on our base, and it's a uh, bullet all heavy chopper rush. And I want to show you that this base design that that I'm using is immune to this type of attack. You cannot use uh, rocket choppers on it. You cannot use all heavies on it, all heavy choppers rather on it. And it pretty much forces you to use a combination of heavy choppers and, and bombardiers so that, um, you know, I'm working against my opponent on a level playing field because that's that's the the meta that I'm using. Now he's lost all of his heavy choppers at this point, and he's just down to heavies and bullet. But I've designed the the area underneath the the sky shield there as a killing zone with all the amplified weapons. And, um, and he does not complete the base. Which, you know, it's typical. Everybody that's tried to go after that base with bullet all heavy rush has, has failed. Okay, and then here's um, the, the, the last of the series that generated my win streak, which got me to the level 22 boss battle. Again, I split the troops on this base evenly because the defensive weapons are evenly distributed across the base. And I'm paying careful attention to where the rocket launchers are, are focusing there on the bottom because if they start targeting my bombardiers, I've got to, I've got to deal with them. Luckily, in this case, uh, they, uh, they targeted the heavies and it, it was fine. Now, that amplified rocket launcher in the back and the shock launcher oh, I missed the uh, health pack there uh, almost took out some of my uh, bombardiers so uh, I had to to take some uh, steps to suppress them by barring them out all right so uh, anyway with that uh, boss battle win I'm up to number 132 on the US leaderboard any hours later so I've opened up my next chest, and with this chest, I'm going to be able to go in and achieve the objective that I've been patiently building towards for quite some time now, which is to max out my artillery, or bomb, and open up the uh, seeker node and that defensive weapon node beyond the seeker node. And that should materially increase the power of my of my attack and of my defense on my base and I think I'm going to be able to rise up even further as a result now note I'm not maxing out or putting additional keys into the gunboat energy because that is not as impactful as I've learned in prior seasons as what I'm going to do you know, maxing out the bomb and uh, adding this uh, doom cannon to to the base. So let's place our uh, shiny new doom cannon 
and I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to put it there, see how that works. I might, I might adjust it later, but this is basically putting it at the center of where all the defenses are, are pulled if the uh, attacker does not flare on my base. Many hours later. So I lost my win streak and actually uh, had a bit of a losing streak, but um, now I've turned that around and I'm back, uh, back on a winning streak. Looking at this uh, oddly designed base, so he's he's left himself open to having that one engine on the bottom crittered out. If I can knock down the defenses there, so I'm not going to worry about that so much, and I'm just going to land my uh, my troops evenly on the left and the right and then work on barting down that flamethrower and rocket launcher so that I can uh, critter down that, that engine. All right, so here goes my uh, barting campaign. Now that I've accumulated enough energy to do it. Throw down two barrages and a bomb. Gotta watch out for for mines. He's got some well-placed mines there. So it looks like it's gonna need one more bomb to take down that rock the uh flamethrower. All right, now we can throw down some critters here. And, you know, one of the drawbacks of a, of a highly condensed base is that a single shock can eliminate the defensive punch from so much of, of that base. And that's exactly what I've done. So the first box of critters uh, and, a, and a bomb took down one boom cannon. And as soon as we get a little more gunboat energy, we're going to throw down the next box of critters on the, the last boom cannon there and help them along with the bomb. And when you know, but two very helpful MVP bombardiers broke out of the pack and on their own initiative came to go destroy the engine for me. So minute 52, pretty decent time. And Navazno is uh, struggling to beat my base. So that's a win. And we extend our win streak to five. All right, so we've won and we've lost some battles and haven't made any net forward progress. But let's go back into combat. Now, this guy's base, the trick to this guy's base is that he's got all of those amplified cannons and boom cannons in the back there. And if you're not careful, you're gonna lose all of your heavy choppas and all your heavies. And then those rocket launchers in the back row that are amplified are gonna shred your, your bombardiers. So we land uh, evenly because we want to take out the uh, that initial row of defensive weapons evenly across and then on a delayed basis we land Kavan and spawn a whole bunch of heavies to support the rocket choppers as they go after those amplified weapons. You gotta throw down some critter boxes to take out those mines otherwise you're gonna lose all your bombardiers on the way there. And then we use our uh, ace of the hole of 
max barrage and bombs between three or four weapons at a time to devastate his uh, his base and we get every heavy chopper through and all the rocket uh, all the bombardiers now um, that boom cannon on the far right is going to start picking off our bombardiers so we flared to that that open engine that's not under the sky shield to get everybody away from there um, so we didn't lose some more uh, bombardiers and then we respawned using Kavan, the one that we lost. So we really didn't lose anything by that. And now we're, we're concentrating on the last few defensive weapons and sky shields. And uh, now the two shock launchers underneath that sky shield could, could be a problem if they both work together and, and all your troops were in one row. But Having the uh, the heavies in front, they're going to take the brunt of all the shocks, and the bombardiers really are doing the work. So a minute forty-seven, not bad. And Pro Jason GR minute forty-two. So that's another one. Many hours later. So we've won some and we've lost some and haven't really made any net progress. And we're now 113 on the U.S. leaderboard. But let's get back into combat. Now this guy's got a, a, a very tricky base to beat. He's got that, that row of defenses across the middle. And he's got the four rocket launchers amplified on the, the bottom middle there. And um, I think the smartest way to deal with this is to do a sweep all from the right. So we're going to land all four heavy choppas, and then on a delayed basis, the four boats of bombardiers. And we're just, we're just going to sweep across from the right. And we just have to worry about that one amplified rocket launcher. And it's and its other uh, mate there. And if we can take those two down, we shouldn't have too much of a problem from those amplified rocket launchers because the other ones are going to target. Oop, no, it, there's one going after. We lost a bombardier on the mine. Well, anyway, we're down to the two amplified rocket launchers. And they're see, they're targeting the, the heavy choppers and, and heavies at the front of, of the group. So it's, it's really not a problem. And uh, look at it, we've got the one MVP bombardier that split off from the group and is uh, methodically picking off the defensive weapons there one by one throw it in a health pack to make sure that he doesn't uh, get sniped by the rocket launchers amplified rocket launcher there all right now the, the bombardiers continue to spread out he threw down some, some critters there to distract the boom cannon so it doesn't take out our bombardiers as they approach. And um, oh, our opponent has completed. So we're going we're gonna to try to speed things up by first taking the one base out and then taking the other out. Engine, rather. And we're down to minute 45. Not sure if that was fast enough against our Chinese opponent. Sweet. Five second victory. And we get 14 stars for the win streak. Any hours later.
So we lost our six times win streak, but uh, we've been winning more than losing, and we worked our way up to level 22 with 49 stars. And um, this guy's got a, a version of this um, same base design, but I oh, missed the, uh, the boom line there. Anyway, so the way to deal with this base is uh, sending in a heavy choppa and bombardier and Kavan on a delayed basis so that they can, they can deal with it because you, you cannot bark down the rocket launchers that are underneath that sky shield. Now, the drawback for this guy in this, this design is if you effectively deal with that sky shield and the two rocket launchers, you are going to be able to complete the base quicker at the end because you can flare to each of the of the two remaining engines in the back row there. Plus, you can throw down critters directly on it, and uh, you finish you finish faster. So I'm going to show you this one. This was uh, pretty quick: two minutes and five seconds. So we, we did a split drop and then we barred down two of the three defensive weapons there protecting that uh, engine on the lower middle. And we're just gonna we're just gonna critter it down. Meanwhile we're using the same technique we described before about landing Kavan on a delayed basis to spawn a whole bunch of heavies that help you against the highly concentrated base. And, and we bark down as many of the defensive weapons as we can that are not under the sky shield and throw down some critters so that that doom cannon is blowing up critters and not something more important. And um, down the base goes. So very, very fast time. All right, so we're going to show you this... Um, attack on uh, Pogo's base. Now he's got a, a, a very well designed base and a doom cannon that's offset to the left. So it's better to do a sweep on this base from the left to get to the doom cannon quicker and not have to chew through those defenses before you get to the doom cannon. And I even did a little bit of a flare so that we can more quickly address the uh, the doom cannon and these defensive weapons around the the engine there, and that worked out really well. And the group divided into two, and now we're actually going to do another flare. And the idea there is that you're going to kill off the boom cannon before everybody gets there, and so all you really did was shifted your two groups up to exactly where you wanted them to be, so that they go after. The left group goes after the, um, the the sky shield protected engine, and the right group goes after the rest of this chain of defensive weapons. And you you may have noted I actually forgot to land one of my groups of bomb deers, and I still crushed uh, crushed that base. All right, I uh, I had a draw on this one, but it was a very good um, very good time on a well designed base. So I want to show you that. So I land the, uh, the two heavy choppers there so that they split and address one each of the, of the uh, mortars on the left, and I put my bombardiers in the middle so those mortars don't pick up my bombardiers, which despite that, they almost took out two. Uh, we're on a sliver of health there. But uh, we're just kind of uh, rolling up the middle of this base and now we've lost a couple of uh, bombardiers. So rather than continue to face the uh, the barrage from those two rocket launchers in the back, I did that flare down to the bottom. But the idea that the the heavy choppers are are slower than the range of the bombardiers, and so the heavy choppers will provide a screen once those uh, engines were down. So. It worked out. It worked out really well. Unfortunately, my opponent also had a really good time on my base, and it was a draw in the end. 
Anyway, I hope you enjoyed the video, and if you did, please subscribe to the channel, give us a like, and thanks as always to Hercules for the video editing.